Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about Skullduggery Pleasant by Derek Landy. I love this book. I'm so mad that it took me so long to read this. I've had it for a while. I got it a while ago because it was like really cheap somewhere. It's been on my radar and it's been something that I was thinking that I would probably like and I just kept putting it off because like if it's not middle grade, it's like on the young side of YA, I think. So I figured I'd like it. Like basically, I mean, it's got a skeleton on it. It gave me kind of Pratchett-y, Gaiman-y vibes from the premise and cover. If you don't know, well, I didn't really know much going into it. I knew it was about a character called Skull Skullduggery Pleasant, who was the skeleton dude. That's really all I knew. That's kind of all you need to know. I love this book so much. Oh my god. I'm so glad I put it on my TBR for October this year, and I'm glad I finally read it. And it's a great one to start the month with. If you're trying to figure out what to read this October, read Skullduggery Pleasant. It's so good. It's a new favorite. I already ordered the next two books. I want them to match this one. This is apparently out of print. These like hard covers. So I found them on eBay for the next two. Hopefully they're in okay condition. We'll find out. A little more about what Skullduggery Pleasant is about. It's about Skullduggery Pleasant. Although the main character, a POV character, is a girl named Stephanie. And so it opens with her uncle dying. And at her uncle's funeral, her family meets skullduggery and um he's got like sunglasses on and like his scarf over his face so you can't see like there's something off about him he's like got a wig on and stuff but they can't really see that he's literally a skeleton <laughs> so uh stephanie ends up inheriting all of her uncle's property uh he was the famous author so he she inherits the rights to his books his estate and everything so she goes to her uncle's old house and like these like creepy scary supernatural dudes come and attack her and they want something that her uncle had and she doesn't know what they're talking about she doesn't know what's going on and skullduggery shows up and he saves her and um she's like what the f is going on and he's like well you know uh stuff and things but uh you're an okay young lady like you don't need me around and she's like you're a literal skeleton and he's like Yup. She's like, okay, well, so like, what's going on? He's like, it's like, it's none of your business. Like, it's fine. And she's like, oh, it's kind of like super duper my business. Cause like people just tried to kill me. And this is my uncle's house and you're a skeleton. And he's like, whatever, just forget about it. And she's like, take me with you. And he's like, it's, it's dangerous. And she's like, I don't care. I'm clearly already in danger. And he's like, all right, I can't say I didn't warn you. And so off they go on their adventure of the underworld of the magical whatever. It takes place in Ireland. So the audiobook, they have uh, Irish accents and there's this fun like jazz music that's used in between chapters. And this is like, uh, you know in Corpse Bride, quick tangent, but I think it captures it. You know in Corpse Bride, the song that is actually sung by Danny Elfman, but it's like this random like bartender type character in the underworld's like bar for the dead. And he sings this sort of expository song about who the corpse bride is. That's like skullduggery pleasant. Like that character who's singing that song and the jazziness of that song. That is skullduggery pleasant. That like if you enjoy the vibe of that part of the movie, you will love skullduggery pleasant. It's like Terry Pratchett meets Tim Burton and Danny Elfman meets uh, if you've ever read Johannes Cabal the Necromancer meets that. <laughs> um, it's just such a good time. I gave this five stars. I had such a good time. The dry, sarcastic, deadpan humor of sk Skullduggery is I'm absolutely my cup of tea. So funny. So here for it. The main character is like really plucky. Uh, she's not like an annoying character. She's kind of out of her depth and she kind of recognizes that at times, but she's also just like, well, fuck it. Like I'm in this now. And the world is, it's, it's kind of really Pratchett-esque in terms of like it's magic, but it's got quirky limits and the baddies are like super bad, but it's also still funny. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. This is my new favorite. <laughs> so I, I don't, positive reviews are I'm like, I don't even know what you're supposed to say. It's just like, it's fantastic. Absolutely freaking read this. I mean, Skullduggery is a detective. So like, but I gather from the series that it's kind of episodic and there are kind of like this sort of crime of the week type setup. But there's like a larger mystery that's teased as well about her and about him and about the history of this magical world. <sighs> it was such a good time. Oh, I'm so mad I didn't read this sooner. I feel like I should say more, but I don't know what else there is to say other than to freaking read this book. Even putting it off, don't put it off. It's amazing. Highly, highly recommend the audiobook. Like if you like deadpan, sarcastic, British humor. This is your book. It's so, so good. Oh my god, I'm obsessed with it. Also, this hardcover. Look at that freaking hardcover. So cool. I feel like this video is gonna be so short because it's me just being like, it's amazing. Go read it. That's kind of all there is to say about it. It's great. God, I wish, I just want to keep talking about it because I love it so much, but I'm just repeating myself and I don't feel like that's helpful to you. <laughs>
<laughs> so check it out if you haven't already. If you have already, then you can gush with me in the comments down below about how great this is. I freaking loved it. I want to read the second one like already, but my TBR for this month is monstrously long, so I need to not read the second one. But uh, it's such a great time. It's so good. It's so good. Read it. Also, it's good for family fun because this is definitely meant for kids. Uh, like for, or is okay for kids, but it's like one of those, you know how like um, the good cartoons back in the day were for kids, but there was tons of jokes for the parents? <laughs> like that. I think this was written some time ago. Like I think, so uh, I guess this was first published in 2007 and this is actually a first edition, which I didn't even realize. Wow. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, so it's old school. It's so good. Ah, just fucking read it. It's so good. Okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read Skullduggery Pleasant, if you've been putting it off like me and are now like, okay, dang, I really gotta read it because you really do gotta read it. It's so freaking good. Oh, uh, if you've got recommendations for me that are similar to Skullduggery Pleasant because like you've read it and like you found some other things that you liked just as much that were similar, please let me know because, oh my god, it's so good. So freaking good. All right, all right, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. All right, let me know all the things. <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you. Okay.